Okay, where to start? This is the Low Free Flow, the most recent addition to the company's lineup of premium mechanical keyboards, and honestly, a pretty significant release when it comes to low profile keyboards in general. As you may recall, one of my first mechanical keyboard reviews was of the Keychron K5 SE, a nice, full size, low profile keyboard that offers some entry level customization of things like switches and keycaps without sacrificing the familiar slim profile of a membrane or laptop typing experience. The Low Free Flow takes that one, or actually two or three, steps further, and in fact has redefined how I think about low profile keyboards in general. No longer are they a gateway to the full customization of high profile keyboards like my Keychron V1 and Q1, the Flow actually stands apart, offering nearly all the customizability of its high profile counterparts. Before we jump into it though, I want to disclose that this keyboard was sent to me by Lowfree, but as always, they had no say in this review, so what follows is my honest perspective of both the good and not so good things about the Lowfree Flow. Let's get into it. On the outside, the Flow has bottom facing LED side lights at both ends, adding a nice splash of color to an otherwise minimalistic metallic aesthetic. Using the function key and the left or right arrow keys, these can be toggled between solid and breathing effects, as well as eight distinct colors. You also get a thin front battery and charging indicator that turns red when the keyboard hits 20% life and pulses at 5%. In my testing, I got a little over 12 hours of use when all the lights were at max settings, but you should be able to get closer to 40 hours depending on your LED settings. I've been using it for 30 hours so far this week with all of the lights off and it's still indicating 100% charge via the Bluetooth connection. Probably because the keyboard keeps sleeping after 10 minutes of inactivity and the lights off mode would activate after one minute. The only other lights on this keyboard are the north facing white per key LED, which simply act as a backlighting with no further color or effects, as well as a small caps lock LED which turns white when engaged or pulses blue when switching between the three Bluetooth memory connections. Bluetooth mode is activated using the three-way toggle switch on the back right end of the keyboard, which is also where you can flip into wired connection mode and plug in the included USB-C cable. Aside from this, the Low Free Flow offers a very simple brushed aluminum aesthetic with a few pops of color from the rose gold right end badge, as well as the raised back feet. These keep the keyboard elevated at about 4 degrees, which is quite comfortable for typing, even without a palm rest, as you may expect for a low profile keyboard. At the moment, Lofree is offering the flow in two colors, white and black, with the white having a more silvery gray aluminum housing, while this black one has a space gray look. Though the main differences are the keycap color and the switches. I'm a fan of the simple thin letter legends of the flow. They're a nice complement to these PVT keycaps, which offer good oil resistance and have a comfortable square but spherical cornered concave profile that helps to locate your fingers centrally while typing. There are no spare keycaps included in the box, but you do get dual Mac PC legends, as well as orange function key accents, which look good and work well with my dual OS setup. Though I could see some people wishing for the option of exclusively Mac or Windows legends. Really though, all of this isn't unusual for a low profile keyboard. The real differences for the flow are on the inside. This begins with the switch, which is honestly my favorite part of the keyboard. The low free flow was predicated on a collaboration between low free and kale to create what became the shadow series of switches. The world's first fully polyoxymethylene or palm based low profile switches. Until now, this was a material reserved for more premium high profile switches. Premium because they offer low friction between the palm stem and housing, which polishes under continued use, resulting in a very smooth actuation that only becomes smoother with time. The black version of the Low Free Flow that I have comes with the tactile phantom switches, which have a 2.4 millimeter travel with a 1.6 millimeter actuation point under 45 grams of force all of which comes together to give the key a really smooth feel and a distinct tactile bump. 
easily the best typing experience I've had on a low profile keyboard. Not to mention, they sound very crisp with a little pop on release. But have a listen for yourself. My only issue with these switches is that they can be a little challenging to remove from the plate. That said, if we deconstruct the flow by removing the 11 tiny peripheral bolts, popping off the case top, and disconnecting the daughter board's ribbon cable, be careful here, we can see that the low profile firsts aren't done yet. Because the PCB plate assembly, which features pre-lubed stabilizers, kale hot swap sockets, north-facing LEDs, and a sandwich silicone dampener, also has eight cutouts for the world's first gasket-mounted system in a low-profile keyboard. For some reason, mine only came with seven gaskets, but I'll chop that up to this being a review model that was rushed out ahead of the final release. Each of the gaskets is rectangular and can be removed by stretching it over the plate hooks, so in theory, you could remove some of them to get more bounce in the keyboard. But because of its low profile nature, this would require you to take out the dense pour-on case foam that sits beneath the PCB, only leaving the thin sound shaping plastic in place at the bottom with the daughter board and the 2000 mAh battery. I've tried this and it surprisingly permits some noticeable flex in the keyboard but I found that the spacebar spring begins to ping a little unpleasantly and it sounds more hollow when the foam is removed, so I would recommend you leave the gaskets in place and use it as it is, right out of the box. Overall, I've been using the Low Free Flow for two weeks, non-stop, and I can honestly say that it's pretty fantastic as a mechanical keyboard, not just a low-profile one. It piqued my interest in the Linear Ghost and Clicky Wizard switches that round out Kale's Shadow series, as well as Palm switches in general, because I really like the smoothness and the pop of this typing experience. As a travel companion, it's also great, and doesn't feel like I'm compromising in any way when working on the go, which is awesome if, like me, you occasionally find yourself working from an iPad. That said, three issues I have with the Low Free Flow are its lack of keycap and switch puller in the box, which I'm hoping is another review model oversight, the fact that it isn't QMK and VIA compatible, or even paired with some kind of in-house software to allow key remapping or macro customization, and the choice of ultra-tiny bolts to secure the top and bottom cases. This last one probably isn't an issue for most people, but if you decide to dive into the flow to check out the gasket-mounted system and make modifications, be very careful, because the bolts are so fine that they can very easily strip the thread of the aluminum housing. I've done this in a couple places already. Even though it would make them a little more prominent in the aesthetic, from a practicality standpoint, I wish these bolts were a little larger, like the M3 bolts in the Keychron Q1 and V1, which are just more functional. That said, the Low Free Flow gets an easy recommendation from me, and would be excellent for anyone who wants the best aspects of high-profile mechanical keyboard customization in a slimmer laptop-like form factor that really just feels good to use. If you're interested in picking one up, Lofree is currently finishing their Indiegogo campaign as I make this video, and it's expected to retail the flow for about 160 USD beginning in mid-August 2023. Though you can save a little using the affiliate link and coupon code that I'll leave in the video description once they become available. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on the low free flow in the comments section below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.